today i'll just give you some updates on what's happening now on our greenhouse after a long time that we haven't made any videos and uh, i hope you will uh, like this video because i will show you a new plants that came here in our growing area so this is uh, cephalotus pellicularis uh, and that's the big boy and here are some special nephentes that we just acquired a week ago and they are doing good on acclimating on in a new growing condition which is uh, very hot and low humidity but we just made some uh, set up here that uh, made make them uh, uh, increase their humidity in the in this specific area by putting more sp live sphagnum moss and uh, putting a shading net on top of it so this is uh, Nefentes Raja uh, here in the Philippines it's a little bit expensive but uh, I just closed my eyes <laughs> I just purchased this plant so that I will have this uh, very beautiful uh, species of Nepenthes. So the other one is the seed grown Sibuyanensis and the other one is uh, Nepenthes Edwardiana. And hopefully this uh, beautiful uh, uh, species of Nepenthes will grow at least and hopefully they, we will see a mature plant after uh, several years of taking care of these plants because they are they said that this uh, species is very hard to grow especially if you don't have uh, the right setup and as you all know already we are uh, growing uh, here on our carnivorous plant in an outdoor setup so it is low humidity the air is very strong here in this area that's why it has a low humidity and plants here it can easily dry if you don't uh, miss them regularly here we just planted some seeds that we acquired also so nepenthes raw seed and nepenthes lowy and uh, nepenthes epithiata seedlings and i don't know if it will give me strikes it's only maybe six seven days since i planted those uh, uh, seeds. Oh, and this is a uh, Nepenthes Raja X Mira. This is a gift from a friend because this plant is infested before with, uh, I think, uh, pest, uh, maybe some aphids or, and other uh, pests that uh, can be found in Nepenthes. So, what I did, I just uh, submerged it. That's, that's what we we're doing before. So this is a hybrid of uh, Nephentes that we, I just uh, featured last time. I just want to show you the growth that they achieved after a couple of months growing here in an outdoor environment. Because most of these plants is grown in an intense light. Most of them are, I think, those uh, growers have a very nice setup with their uh, indoor light. That's why most of the feature is red, dark red, but now they are uh, on a green hue and coloration because uh, they are on the shaded area, growing outdoor nicely. So I'm excited to see what's the, the biggest feature that they can give me in this uh, kind of uh, environment or situation that they put them. So this is uh, an Apprentice Bloody Mary, a gift from a friend. And this is uh, the plant that uh, I just acquired maybe last year or this, uh, yes, this year from the uh, Pentes or Peter Plant Farm of Bukidnon, Pentes Geriana, I think. And this is some seed grown. I just want to show you the seed, uh, all of the seed grown, uh, the Pentes, uh, but do, this has a racenia, it's not just seed grown. Uh, and this is some seed grown nepenthes that I acquired <laughs> uh, sprouted or germinated in my old setup and actually honestly I don't know what's the idea of each uh, nepenthes because before I don't have any interest on nepenthes I just throw them on my growing medium it's for them if they want to survive or not if they survive and that's it I 
potted them in their separate uh, planter. But now my favorite collection is Lephantus. So this the Lephantus that I just acquired, I think a couple months ago. Most of them is Ampularia and Ampularia hybrids, and they are doing great. And some of the older uh, cultivar like this, and uh, from uh, Future Plant Farm. They're putting a lot of basils and they're having all of them having a leaf jump. I think they love the setup. What I uh, what we did here, we just put a lot of live sphagnums, and I think they like the setup. And this is the uh, the previous that I got last time, the Dependus Gaia, and it putting a lot of basils also. And this is the seedling tray that I planted before, which I made also a separate video from this. This, this is Nepenthes, I think, for that, ah, Mariliana, Nepenthes Mariliana. And they are crazily sprouting, germinating. And I'm very happy with this because it's, they are uh, one month, uh, I planted them a man, one month ago, and they are putting a lot of strikes in there. And after two months, I'm expecting more. But uh, on the other side, here in the other tray, we, we planted the uh, Nepenthes longata. I haven't seen any strike. <laughs> Even it has, I think, two to three pods of Nepenthes longata uh, hybrid uh, seedlings. I'm sure I, get, I got a very good source from this, uh, Sergio Fucato. But I think my growing condition, I don't know if that's the case or I, I just need more time to to wait. Because some of the Nepenthes, uh, they said they can germinate after a couple of months, up to a year, <laughs> some of them. But I'm not giving hope on those uh, propagation and I just want to learn from, my, from these experiences. And this is some sphagnomos that we propagated last time. Actually, my wife do, did did all the work for this uh, propagation. So, guys, if you want to <laughs> acquire some uh, propagation uh, uh, tray with a lot of sphagnums on it, that's already arranged in the way that you can harvest it, harvest uh, from time to time. So, this is your chance. Uh, this is uh, we sell it by trays, like uh, what I showed you on the initial video. Uh, it's a thousand five hundred uh, Philippine peso in it, but we're just selling it within the country and the country uh, in our country, which is the Philippines. <laughs> and hopefully, you can enjoy uh, harvesting your own live spadamos. So, this is the old uh, trace that we that we have planted with the uh, red spadamos and other uh, sand juice, and this is the few uh, werewolves spawn that uh, they are like immortal they, they are already more than two years in my care and they also experience natural dormancy in this area this is the raptor that we just propagated from a separate also separate video they're putting a beautiful growth from where we started last time and we, he has already some of his uh, own seedling that we harvested from the mother plant. So this is uh, the uh, Biking Mirab uh, Mirabilis hybrids that we get from Rosello Ocampo Junior that uh, we put here in our growing area. And uh, some of them I already put on uh, Pusan because I want to see their uh, redness that they showed uh, last summer. I want to see their uh, difference in their traits because even they are uh, same uh, cross, they are seed grown. That's why we're expecting to see some differences on pictures or on their foliage on their leaves. So this is the maroon monster that we just rescued last time with a lot of pests, but they now they are thriving back to their original uh, uh, health. So. Hopefully guys, uh, you watch the video about submerging method because that really helps on those situations that you get a lot of pests on a big planter with a lot of 
uh, Venus flytrap because if you will submerge it one by one it will take a lot of time but if you know how to manage or at least uh, do some maintenance on your growing area it will save some time and your effort or energy to take care of this to have a very uh, good result so this is the Trebs Dracula that we have last time they are in very bad shape but now they are thriving back so this is the Plama beautiful as always and this is the uh, new cultivar that we have here uh, okay, this is the Rosabella so this Rosabella is on dormancy right now just that's why I took a little time to show it to you so that you can see what's the difference in between this uh, period where they are on dormant state where they look uh, very <laughs> I say ugly or sleeping uh, I'm so sorry Rosabella but uh, this is uh, they are on the dormancy period they are really slow growing, uh, going right now but still I'm expecting to see them tribe maybe when the season gets much uh, temperate or hot uh, more uh, much uh, warm temperature come this coming summer so this is the Krebs Dracula just want to show you the beauty of this uh, plants while they are on this form because soon they will produce upright uh, petioles and they will be much uh, 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 much uh, uh, pleasurable to look at so this is the sunrise one of my favorite cultivar I think I haven't posted that in our shop that's why maybe today I will make some uh, changes on our <coughs> shop page so that you can also acquire this uh, some uh, beautiful specimen out all our plants is outdoor grown so this is the clone number two I think and then they are very beautiful right after I submerged them out uh, for about eight hours so after eight hours I bring them up again and put and put them on their original uh, location that I get them then after maybe a week or two they are putting very healthy growth I don't know maybe uh, they like the the transition between the cold water when I am leaving them at night then when the morning comes with their uh, cooler uh, well, air and temperature and slowly go getting uh, uh, warmer and throughout the day they like those uh, transition of the of temperature and the weather and uh, I'm not sure what kind of uh, Nefenta is this, but some of my friends uh, they, they told me that this is Alata or other cross of Alata. But I got this uh, previous from uh, pictureplantfarm.com. So now uh, I got it uh, before, it's only one uh, small plant, but now it has three basal, I think, and they're thriving in a very nice way. So, this is the positive, I think. I'm so sorry. And this is the Shenron and Galaxy and some of the uh, Black Star. I think that's the Black Star. And we acquired a new uh, rechargeable sprayer because uh, why not? <laughs> we have, uh, we need. Um, new one because the battery of the last one it only lasts for about three to four days i need uh, i need one that can last for a week so that uh, between charges every uh, rest day i put i charge them overnight then next day it is fully charged and ready for another week so this is the same uh, same this uh, cross Biking, uh, biking, mirabilis uh, hybrids. Maybe when I will uh, release some of this, I will put the specific name because it, the name is really long. And they're putting a beautiful feature now. And some of them is really huge. And uh, I'm happy that uh, I 
uh, you know guys i sprayed a little maxi on them and put some of some of, on their feature so i i used again maxi in this season and hopefully guys you can also uh, try using maxi because it's really effective before i'm not using any chemicals but uh, i noticed that uh, their the growth is a little bit slow they're healthy but uh, the growth is very unusually slow that's why i use again maxi uh, fertilizer and i'm expecting some of the feature that they, it will uh, uh, they will uh, dam they will be they will receive some damage because you know guys how much uh, the ppm of maxi that i put on them i used a thousand five hundred ppm <laughs> concentration of maxi on the feature I didn't spray it but I just put it on the picture because I can sacrifice a picture but not the whole plant <laughs> then I again I spray some uh, low dose of maxi on the leaves around 100 to 110 ppm of uh, uh, concentration and they really like it and uh, actually I accidentally sprayed the uh, Nepenthes Edwardiana when then the next day I read that Nepenthes Edward, Edward, Edwardiana don't like high concentration of fertilizer so I'm expecting <laughs> for the next uh, couple of months that Nepenthes Edwardiana will not give me good feature but uh, it's okay I'm on I'm focused now more on their uh, root system than on their feature because just uh, keeping them alive is already a bonus to me because they are uh, oh, uh, highland uh, should be on the highland setup so I, I came down to show you guys some of the huge feature that this uh, biking uh, mirabilis cross uh, produces and this is just uh, some medium size I saw bigger uh, sizes of this uh, feature and uh, it's really beautiful and our uh, propagator of this uh, Cross, Mr. Rosaila, he showed me some of the picture that the, uh, that his uh, mother plant is producing. It they are really, really huge, far away from this uh, size that I have here. So I uh, having a place that have uh, high humidity and low, lower temperature, it's really a plus for your uh, setup. So this place I show I'm showing it to you because that's the place we are planning to put a highland setup where we, uh, we can put all the sphagnumus propagation that we have and most of the nepenthes that is uh, high uh, that, that needs highland setup and some of the plants that will arrive here that needs uh, acclimation so I'm going down to show you some of the plants of my wife and my mother that they, uh, they have in collection and uh, this is the uh, ibc tank it's uh it's almost drained last time because there uh, there's uh, not a lot of rain but when uh i put of that came i have more than enough that it overflow so <clears throat> hopefully we can help the people that uh affected by type of that so this is the rare uh, cuttings of uh, grapes that I I got last time and I'm happy to announce that they are all in good condition and five over five they are alive so <clears throat> this is the growing area when you're looking from downstairs uh, and as you can see it's very windy so so guys thank you for watching again this is uh, it's a trap and God bless you bye bye